Take your Bibles this morning and turn to Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8. We're looking at verses 1 through 6. Let's all stand for the reading of God's Word together. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies. You may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. I've been preaching a sermon series called Well Versed, Bible Answer to Tough Questions. And this morning we're looking at part two of what will heaven be like. And so as we go over these verses, I want you to be able to understand them and be able to explain them well to others. That's what well verse is all about. You need to know how to answer people's questions. So I encourage you to take notes this morning. If anybody needs notes or a sermon insert, raise your hand. We'll get that to you. Everybody have one? All right. When you take notes, it helps you to listen better and to take it with you and remember better as well. So the first question we look at is, will we become angels when we go to heaven? And the answer is no. Angels and human beings are entirely different beings. And as you see here in the Word of God that we just read from Psalm chapter 8, the Lord distinguishes very plainly between man, man and angel. God created angels long before he created man, if you read the word of God and understand it properly. God had fellowship with angels for so many years. Well, of course, there's no time in heaven, but years as far as our calculations go, probably trillions of years or more before he created man. And so we know that Man, according to the Word of God, we are His favorite creatures. Why? Because He calls us children of the King. You see, the angels are not children of the King. The Bible says very plainly they are servants of the King and servants of His children as well. And so many people think that when we die, all of a sudden we look like that. And there we go. And that's just not true. God doesn't put wings on your back and a harp in your hand and a halo over your head when you die. There's nothing in the Bible that states that. As a matter of fact, that is totally against the Word of God. Totally opposite of what the Word of God says. The angels are serving us now by the hand of God. And the angels will serve us and the Lord forever in heaven. And, of course, we honor them, we respect them as we do each other. But they are no greater than we are. But we actually are greater as being the children of God. We don't give any glory to ourselves. We only give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ for making us His children. Now, will we play harps in heaven? Uh, maybe so. But we won't be sitting on a cloud playing a harp for That would be kind of boring, wouldn't it? So I hope you wrote down some of those scriptures that I gave you there. And as I, as I go from question to question, be sure to jot those down because those all answer those questions. So do all, angel, do all Christians have guardian angels is another part of that question. And the answer is yes. But we give all the glory, praise, and prayer to Jesus. Now there are some people that actually pray. There are some churches that teach their people to pray to their guardian angel and have conversations with their guardian angel. Nowhere in the Bible did God ever say to do that. Nowhere in the Bible did God ever say to pray to people who have died and gone to heaven. There's no evidence of that at all. God, only, God says we are 
are only to pray to Him as God and honor Him as God. And He hears our prayers. We don't need intercessors. We don't need angels to intercede. We don't need Mary or the apostles or anybody to intercede for us. The Bible says we go straight to the Lord if we are the children of God. If only those who are born again can go straight to God. Because only those who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior have all their sins forgiven and their hearts are right before God and can pray to Him. Those who are lost can come to the Lord as God compels them to be saved. And their prayers go straight to the Lord when they are ready to submit to Jesus as Savior and Lord, God and friend. So jot some of these scriptures down because these scriptures show us that every Christian is given a guardian angel from the Lord. And these are scriptures that prove that. Another question people ask, do our guardian angels make mistakes? And we look at what just happened to some of our family members here, Glenda's family. And we hear others who have uh, whole families that have died because of a drunk driver. And that's why Baptists are so opposed to alcohol and any illegal drug. And alcohol is a drug, folks, because it continues to change your mind and, and, and cause you to do things you otherwise would do. Some people say, well, I won't get drunk. You know, but, but no alcoholic ever meant to become an alcoholic. So why start that? Why mentor others in that way? Another thing is that, that those who have wrecks and those who kill families, that, they never thought they were drunk. Oh, I can drive home. I haven't had too much. And you know what? Texting is just as bad, isn't it? Oh, I can text while I'm driving. Nothing bad's going to happen. Pow! And I hope that the authorities find out what that truck driver was doing when he hit our precious family. Because you know what? There are consequences to sin. And people need to pay the consequences to sin. God is a loving God. God is a gracious God. And he says that all sins have consequences. And God, um, we pray for that truck driver because God wants him to come to him to be forgiven. God wants him to forgive himself. But God wants him and all of us to learn from the mistakes that we make. So guardian angels do not make mistakes. Every one of those children in that vehicle had a guardian angel. Were they asleep? Were they making a mistake? No way. God is omnipotent. All powerful, omniscient, all knowing. And you see, God has a plan for every life. And I want you to write that down. It's on the screen right there. Nothing happens to a Christian that God does not allow. If we would have been killed in a car accident coming home, I would want all of you to just do a Baptist dance about it. You know, it's hard to do that because you miss that person, you love that person. But you know, when, when I go to heaven, I, I, don't, I don't want everybody crying about that. I want everybody to rejoice that I finally got home. And the Lord Jesus Christ has a day for all of us to be born and a day for all of us to go home to heaven. And if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you're going to heaven, because you know what Randy talked about a moment ago, you believe that there's one way to heaven through Jesus who died on the cross for me. And you know you're forgiven forever. You look forward to that day. Every day I hope the sun doesn't come up so rapturally. <laughs> I'm ready for that. I'm sorry for that. I want to jump and bounce. <laughs> but there's a day for that rapture. There's a day that we all go to heaven. Now, I want you to understand something else. Some people say, if God is so loving and God is so in control, then why would he allow bad things to happen to good people? And the answer to that is free will. You see, God has to give people a choice to either accept His will and do His will or reject Him and reject what He wants. And because God gives everybody a free will and choice, then people are going to make mistakes. People are going to do things that are horrible, that grieve us. And to make us real angry. Sin should make you angry. Sin should grieve you. But God has to give people free will. And because of that, horrible things happen in this world. And sometimes God says, it's time to go home. And sometimes he does a miracle. 
and no, someone has not heard at all. Someone just told me just recently, I think it was Randy, she was telling me that at school she reached out to grab a child before it was hit by a car, and she was this close from being hit herself. You see, it wasn't Randy's time to go. It wasn't that child's time to go. The Holy Spirit and that guardian angel of Randy and that child make sure that child lives longer because God had plans for that child to live longer. There's a hospital full of little children dying in every major city. And we would prefer for every one of those children to live a long life, but some of those children, it's God's plan for them to go ahead and go home. God didn't give them cancer. Satan does that. Satan's the creator of all that is wrong because he, he's, he's the originator of sin. The Lord Jesus Christ is there to help and comfort and strengthen and bring order to what is chaos, to bring understanding to what is very confusing. So if you understand the Word of God and you understand the person of Jesus Christ, then you are able to understand God's ways that are much higher than our ways. Free will and sin always brings difficulty on earth, but God has the final victory. And as Glenda told me the other day, my babies are in heaven. My grandbabies are there with Jesus having a wonderful time. And they would not want to come back. And God used them and their organs to save many lives. And God brought much good from it. So right now Romans 8, 28. All things, even the most horrible thing that Satan does, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Will heaven be boring? Absolutely not. It will be a joy to serve Jesus throughout all eternity. When you get to heaven, it's going to be so exciting that there's no way that you want to return here to this place. People sometimes say, I'd rather be having a great time in hell than be bored to death in heaven. Note the assumption. Sin is exciting and righteousness is boring. People that believe that have never come to know Jesus and the excitement and joy of serving Jesus and seeing life's change, have they? Believing that assumption means you fall for the devil's lie. Sin robs us of fulfillment in life. Sin doesn't make life interesting. Listen to this. Sin doesn't make life interesting. Sin makes life empty. Sin makes life difficult because sin always has negative consequences. When there's true fulfillment in life, there is beauty. When we see God as He truly is, an endless reservoir of fascination and blessing, boredom becomes impossible. In heaven, we will always be fully Fulfilled. Psalm 1611, write that down, describes it. The heaven is full of joy and eternal pleasure. So what in the world will we do in heaven? Well, the greatest part of heaven is you're with Jesus. You see him face to face. You have fellowship with the Lord unlike you've ever had fellowship with him before. Our family, all the believers throughout history will be there. We have fellowship with them. You know, think about the love that you shared with your family, your parents. If you had Christian parents, you had a loving Christian home and lots of joy, lots of peace there. Multiply that by a trillion times, and that almost is what heaven will be like and even better. And in heaven, we'll learn new things that will bring us great joy. You know, when I think about heaven, we, we, we can't even imagine the possibilities of what heaven is like. You know, I, I believe with all my heart when we get to heaven, there's going to be places that we go to listen to the stories of the apostles that were not told in the Bible. Let me tell you about this. We didn't have enough room in the Bible to tell you this one. Let me tell you what Jesus did on this day. Let me tell you how he changed this life and blessed that life. He was just going right and left. Pow, pow, pow. You know, in all the stories and pictures I've seen in Bibles of Jesus, I've never seen a picture of people lined up in a long line waiting for Jesus to touch them. But I finally found that on the internet. And I thought, well, where in the world is that 
the Word of God. It's right there. We sometimes just read it and pass it right over. But people, throngs of people, thousands of people were lined up just waiting for Jesus to touch them. And if they were well, well, he, he could touch them and make them even better than they've ever been. Now, I thought I felt good, but now I feel like I'm four years old. Because, you see, the Lord Jesus Christ is, has the power to renew completely. Yeah. He can do all things. And so, think about it. The Bible says in Revelation 14, 13, we will rest from our labors. But that doesn't mean we're just going to sit around and, and rest all day and not do anything. You know, as much as some of you enjoy a lazy boy chair, <laughs> you will not want that in heaven because you'll be missing out on the awesome things that God is doing. Or say, come on, Brandon, you don't want to miss out on this. Man, get out of that chair. It'll be a, such a joy and such an excitement. And uh, I know he I know won't want that. No one would want that to miss out. There's going to, there's going to be new hobbies that we're going to learn. There's things, you know, I've often wondered what, what in the world will, will preachers do? Is everybody heaven saved? Nobody's going to need equipping of the saints anymore. They're already equipped. And, and the, nobody's going to need the preaching anymore. So what are preachers going to do? Well, there's going to be things that we never knew we could do. That God's going to have us do. I love the smell of wood. <laughs> My son's a carpenter. I, I've always wondered what it would be like to coach a professional football team. Me and Landry may be right there together. I don't know. But it's going to be glorious. I hope I'll be running out as tight end on those plays again, making touchdowns. But you know what? There's going to be new hobbies. There's going to be new sports. There's going to be new entertainment that you just would never even think about. You know, I don't know if you've ever been to, into Branson, the Sight and Sounds Theater. But I mean, folks, that's just a taste of heaven. If you've never been there, you can go there. Because that is a theater that, that it, they show you parts of the Bible that it just comes to life. I believe there's going to be a sight and sounds theater in heaven. Where they're going to be reliving the things that happen on earth that we never read about. It's going to be glorious. You're going to see the, the birth of Jesus reenacted all over again. But it's going to be even more specific than we see today. At the, at, at the Sights and Sounds Theater and on television, it's going to be glorious. We're, we're going to see Jesus teaching children to heaven himself. We're also going to see it acted out, I believe, by others in what it was like on earth. And, and Jesus calming the waves. You know, we, we won't want to watch it in an instant replay. We're going to see it happen right there, just like it happened on earth. We're going to be reminded of the flogging and the beatings that Jesus took. Remind us of his love for you and for me and the sacrifice that he gave so we could go to heaven. We're going to praise him forever for the torture that he went through. We're going to always be reminded because the Bible says that the, 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 the holes will be in his hands, the holes will be in his feet, and we'll always remember his sacrifice and his awesome love for us. We'll always be reminded of his resurrection, his glorious resurrection. We'll always praise Him for sending His Spirit into our hearts. At the Sight and Sounds Theater, they have a glorious reenactment. That's, that's the one we saw in England there, of, of the ark, Noah's ark. And, you know, today, folks, listen to this. We have that ark that has just been built. I hope we take that bus someday, take a trip, and go see that ark. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? But you know what? The Bible says God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. I think that ark's still going to be with us. Forever. And we'll just go into that ark and, and enjoy all the animals that just want to go in there and have fun, you know? And you know that uh, we'll, we'll see things reenacted from the Bible like Samson, that, that only God could have reenacted in a perfect way. In heaven, there is everlasting thrill. I remember when I was a boy, I had never experienced thrill like I did when the Cowboys won the Super Bowl <laughs> in 1972. And the year before, we had lost to the Colts, and I, I, I love Johnny Unitas, but I was so mad at him. So mad at those Colts. But the next year, we made it, and it was such a thrill. 
I'll never forget. Remember, guys, the Dallas Morning News, Super Cowboys, bowl them over. And that picture of Tom Landry on the shoulders of the Cowboys. Finally made it after 12 years. I was born the same year the Cowboys were born. When, I was, when they were 12 years old, I was 12 years old, celebrating that Super Bowl as a 12-year-old boy. And I mean, I, I, that whole day, I was, I was so excited. I just couldn't contain my energy. I got, a, I got a sticker. I put that sticker above the Cowboys newspaper on my wall. And every day, I looked and thank you, Jesus, we are world champions. And I, mean, I was so excited for so very long. And all of a sudden, the excitement was gone. They had the Super Bowl parade in Dallas. They had all the celebration. And then it's like, where'd it go? The Beatles broke up. Elvis isn't what it used to be. And the thrill is gone from the Cowboys suit. What? And all of a sudden I realized, I need more Jesus. I need more Jesus to keep that joy. I need to serve him more and see him do things through my life in order that I would have more of that joy. But folks, let me tell you what, that thrill in heaven never passes away. Not for one second does the screen turn black. Not for one second do you miss the Beatles or Elvis. Not for one second does anything take the place of the thrill of Jesus and all the glories of heaven. And I guarantee you the no one in heaven wants to come back here because nothing here will compare to heaven. I ask you today, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? And if you do, are you sharing this good news with others so they can go to heaven and have eternal life? You know, we, we sing our songs about heaven. We, we are overjoyed that we're going to heaven one day. But folks, don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Make sure that every day that you wake up, you say, Lord Jesus, help me today to remind somebody about you that they can have the chance to go to heaven. That they can have that assurance and that joy that heaven is their home when they die. And you know what? I believe that we won't, we won't have enough time to make the tracks to get a handout. If we're doing that every single day. Don't forget about that, folks. That wasn't just a month or two thing that we did when I first came as pastor. That needs to continue every single day and every single week. And look for every, try to take, try to make opportunities happen that you share with others your testimony.